What's up guys? It's Kayla and welcome back to my channel for some more amnesia memories. We have our last extra story which is Ukyo and then in a couple more months we'll have the continuation to this story which is in Japanese but I'll be translating it for you guys and posting it on my channel so look out for that. But without further ado, let's just get into Ukyo short story. I had a dream. You were walking alongside the tracks in the bright afternoon light and passed in front of me on your way to the train station. I was so happy to be able to see you again, so happy that I could cry. I closed my eyes. I was having another dream. The bus, full of warm sunlight, gently rocked back and forth on the bumpy road and there were no other passengers but me. As the bus stopped at a light, through the windows I could see your figure sitting at a cafe talking to someone. Long hair, sparkling eyes, your cheerful face, your smile. Ah, I was able to see you again, I thought to myself. What bliss. Once again I was dreaming. Quite rattling, the bus swayed and moved onwards towards its next destination. Now that I think of it, the first time I met you, I showed you how to get to the bus stop. I don't know my way to the station. The worried look on your face was charming. When I told you it was dangerous to travel alone, as you could get lost, you suddenly laughed and assured me you knew that someone would help. Your innocent belief in the kindness of others was surprisingly new to me. It's difficult to believe in others. It is difficult to continue loving someone. The bus swayed more than usual. There was an intense screech, rattling, rattling, a thud, a crash, breaking, crushing, fluttering. I saw the driver crawl out of the upturned bus from his window. He ran towards me, then stopped as he saw me. He was probably speechless. I couldn't see his face, so I couldn't tell for sure. The driver ran towards the main street and shouted something in a loud voice, and I was left alone crushed under the bus. Perhaps he had gone to call for help, but I knew he wouldn't make it in time. My legs wouldn't move. I couldn't feel anything past my waist. I knew even if I tried to pull myself out, I wouldn't be able to. The bus didn't look like it was leaking gasoline, which was fortunate, so I'd probably die from the blood loss alone. I knew this would happen from the moment I got on the bus. If there'd been any other passengers besides me, I wouldn't have boarded, but there wasn't. The universe is exceptionally cruel. If you show weakness, no, even if you don't, it's in its nature to destroy what's foreign to it. Today was August 22nd. I would leave this world with three days to spare before the time limit. Even then, I was glad for this time around. I was able to see so much of her smiling face. It was short, but we exchanged words as a waitress and a customer. It was so difficult to hold back my tears when she directed her voice at me. I wanted to hear her more. I wanted to touch her. Even once, I wanted her to call my name. But that was a wish I'd long given up on. I couldn't get close to her. And the closer I did get, the more danger I put her in. That was why I had to die so quickly. The weather was nice today, and I was able to see her, too. Up until today was enough, I thought, so I embarked on a journey with no destination. As I opened my eyes, the blue skies of summer were spread across in front of me. Ah, if I could leave here with this blue being the last thing I see, I'd be at least a little bit happy. The blood flowing from my legs started creeping up my back, and the unpleasant sensation brought me back for a moment. The pain was distant, but the final pings told me to keep struggling while I still have life. Failed again, huh? In a darkness devoid of any senses, a soundless voice spoke to me. You've been resurrected. Your wish was not fulfilled. This is why this cannot end yet. I cannot separate from you just yet. Even when he had gone through the same experience, the same pain of death, the reason Nil could speak so indifferently about it was because he was an existence akin to a god. Inside this muddy darkness, only Neil let off any light, though it was hazy. I'm unsure whether light is the correct word since most of my senses were fading. In the times before I reached a new world, I basically didn't exist. My magic has been nearly depleted. At this rate, we'll be unable to escape from this place. We'll be bound to drift eternally in this darkness. I wouldn't like that. I thought, feeling heavy and cold. Even though I'd experienced the pain of death countless times, I didn't like this idea. Being unable to disappear was frightening. The thought of there being no end was terrifying. I'd rather have this endless loop of living and dying continue, rather than be in eternal darkness. That's why I think I'll gamble on this one last time. 
one last time. Did we even have anything left to gamble with? Let's go back to that world. The world where you were with her. But that world is. She's already died there. That is why I must rewind time. In doing this, I'll use up all my power, and I'll most likely end up in a comatose state. However, it's all we have left. A comatose state? Did this mean I wouldn't be able to talk to him like this anymore? That isn't all. If you fail in this world, we'll not be able to escape any longer. From this darkness? From this eternal terror? Yes, that's probably what would happen. But there's nothing else we can do. If we let this go, then we'll truly lose our last chance. I'd no longer be able to see her. Yes, that's what would happen. Ah, oh, this would be miserable. The reason I was able to continue living like this, even when I could barely keep a grasp on my sanity, even as my soul continued to shatter, was because of her existence. I wanted to see her. With that simple goal in mind, I continued to live and to die. Are you scared? I'm not scared. If I could meet with her one more time, I'd be happy, no matter what would be waiting for me in the end. You've already given up, haven't you, on being saved. It's something I wouldn't wish for. I couldn't wish for happiness. Only, if I could see her become happy, that was all I needed. Even if you've given up, I won't. Ukyo, I promise I'll save you. And if I cannot save you, I will end it all. Thank you, Neil. I was truly grateful for those words. Let's go, Ukyo. This is our last journey. Yes, let's go. Let's meet her. One more time. What's wrong? You keep spacing out. I came to my senses and saw a face peering at me. I was reflected in her beautiful eyes. I was close enough to her to see us both at the same time. Surprised, I took a large step backwards. Ah, watch out! Uh-huh. The moment I stepped back, my footing shook for an instant. I remember that this park had stepping stones that were dangerous after a rain. Even in the absence of rain, it was easy to trip if you weren't careful. And in that moment, Ukyo! Trying to stop me mid-fall, she hurriedly extended her hand. I was glad, though no matter how you looked at it, I was too heavy for her. I wrapped myself around her before falling onto my back. Thankfully, I was able to cushion her fall. But was she alright? Are you, Are you okay? okay? We asked each other simultaneously. She did look extremely worried, but she didn't look like she was in pain. Which meant she hadn't hurt herself. Knowing this, I sighed with relief. Ukyo, do you hurt anywhere? Ah, uh, yeah, a little. I think I hit my back on this rock here. On a rock? That must have hurt! This is nothing. I don't think I've broken anything. It wasn't enough to leave a dent, much less break anything. But if I tried to get up, I'd probably just fall over again. So I lay down on the grass instead. Gently, she pulled herself out of my arms and sat up next to me. Ukyo? I smiled. I'm fine. I'm just taking a break. I'll get up in a moment. Okay, I'll wait. She was adorable, sitting next to me with a worried expression for a while. Feeling a bit mischievous, I reached up and lightly pulled on her hair. At first, she showed resistance, but after a second tug, she leaned down towards me with some hesitation. I placed my hands behind her head and gently kissed her. I was so worried about you. I know. I'm not gonna die. I promised that I would keep the two of us safe. I wouldn't waste my life like I'd done before, so that this happiness would not end so easily. If possible, and for as long as possible, I'll stay by your side until the end. You know... Yes? No, it's nothing. Whether sick or healthy, I would stay with you until the last moment of my final breath. I'm so happy. Etching into my eyes the vision of the day's azure, sky in your smile with a feeling of bliss, I closed my eyes. Was I still dreaming? Okay guys, that's it for Ukyo's point of view story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really loved his route. It was definitely the most interesting of all of them in my opinion. Let me know your guys' favorite guy in the comments below. And I will do a poll before we start the after story on who we should start with. So please look forward to it. And also, I'll talk to you guys on Wednesday for a double feature of Blood and Roses. Bye! Bye!